So we got a small group. And um, so I'll go through a couple slides. And again, um, I've got my entire team here. So we kind of live what we, we, we live what we breathe. So again, we're, we're taking maintenance calls as we speak. We've got people looking at houses. So we're going to kind of talk about how that works. But um, so we'll go ahead and get started. And again, my name is Mark Brody with MAR Companies here in Scottsdale. And so uh, we, and we currently own and manage over 1,300 units in Arizona and New Mexico. So this is a, this is a, if you've heard of comic books, this is the Tinker from Spider-Man. And Cole, who is my marketing guy over here, he, um, he kind of, my whole company kind of calls me the Tinker. So early on, like I said, we talked about CKC, get, get uh, curious, get some knowledge, and then take action, do something. And what we found is that, again, when you're, when, whenever something, what I found is when something happens in your business and it starts to cause frustration or you have a process that, that's slow, I will be the Tinker. So I would say, well, geez, this is kind of inefficient. How do we make this better? How do we make it faster? So I always tell people, I'm an efficiency freak. I always look for ways to, to improve the process and do things better. So when we, um, when, we, when we were talking about how do we do this talk, and so we thought, what if we just asked this crazy question, what if we didn't have humans? And that's a really outside the box kind of thought, right? If we don't have any humans, then how would we get anything done? And we go that we do need humans. <laughs> so we're all we're all here, we're all human. I've got my whole team here, so we have a lot of humans. But we want to change what the human does. And I think I've said this in a couple other presentations, but really we look at what is the highest and best use of our real estate assets and what is the highest and best use of our human capital. So again, how do we maximize efficiency and make sure we're delivering a very high uh, level of, of customer service to our residents. So what we look at is we only want to have people where they're needed. And I, I talked also at one point about love and like. Uh, there's, there's kind of this, I think if you looked at your job every day, you would say, these are some things I really love to do. These are some things I like to do. These are things that I'm good at what I don't like to do, and these are the things that I should never do. So we want to always look at things, process in particular, and say, what is the highest and best use of somebody to focus in and do that job that they love and love every day? So when I started off, obviously, I had one property, and it was a 78 space park in Mesa, Arizona, and out of those 78 spaces, I think we probably had 40 of them occupied. So, at that time, the human had to do everything. The human had to collect rent, the human had to go look at plumbing, the human had to go to the post office, the human had to call the attorney, the human had to pay the electric bill, the human had to do everything. So we just had one person. As we expanded into two parks, then I said, well, this model works, and this is probably how both what I find most park owners are still doing is they're still saying, well, I got a second park now. So this works, so I'll just duplicate it. And then as we got a third park, we said, well, this is working now, so we'll duplicate it again. And when we got to about four properties, what we started to notice was, again, the, the tinker in me said, I've got four parks, I've got four park managers, they're all doing exactly the same thing. And but one park, the, the manager, really likes people. Uh, she can't wait for people to come to the property. And let me show you some homes, this is amazing. <clears throat> but she didn't like giving bad news. She didn't like giving notices. And that another property where I have a park manager that loves giving bad news with a smile. You need to clean up your mess. You need to get this done. Your car should be parked there. So there, she raised her hand up there, right? Right? But but Don, She's brave, she's the brave one to your left, brave one to my right. But Don, what Don was doing though is she's like, you know, I'll keep this thing just humming and running and 
moving, moving super smooth. But again, she, she was a she self-admitted was a salesperson and didn't want to go, you know, sell homes. And then you do another part, and it's like somebody's my park manager was like really good at maintenance. You know, they understood everything about maintenance, sewers, water leaks, uh, anti-suction on the hose bin when Maricopa County comes and bugs us, gives us a violation because somebody unscrewed the anti uh, the uh, anti-siphon thing on the hose and so so really good at maintenance. But again, they didn't really care too much about you know selling homes, leasing homes, or about I don't really want to get bad news because I just want to fix things. And then the other manager was like, I really like the, the accounting side of things. I like collecting the rent. I like making sure that the ledger is balanced. I like sure making you know that everything is detailed and everything is organized. And again, love this. When I'm organizing stuff or I'm doing numbers or I'm doing financial reporting, that's that's my wheelhouse. But everything else, you know, it's I don't really maintenance is interesting, but I don't want to you know, learn too much about it or whatever. So this is kind of a picture of what you end up with. You end up with four offices, and if you're again, if you're committed to growth and you're committed to owning and managing more properties, this is what it looks like. You've got four four park managers someday, but they're all doing exactly the same thing. So we started looking at this and said, man, we've got multiple people all doing the same thing, but what would happen if we tinkered with it, went back to my medical roots and said, let's do some specialization. And how would we, how would we centralize that and do that? And that's where we kind of came up with this early on. Uh, and this was about 2015 when we started doing this, 2016. We said, we'll come up with some sort of remote property manager. So if I could take the best qualities of in the gifts of a, of a person, something that they love to do every day, not like to do or are good at but don't like to do, if we could take that and we could wrap it around this, this remote model, then what would that look like? So we started tinkering with it. And we, at this time, we ended up getting an office. And so we said, well, we're going to have one person kind of own all the, you know, all the, the accounts payable, accounts receivable. We're gonna have one person start really focusing on inspections, property inspections, but not just for one property, for, for multiple properties. And again, the, I, all of my properties are here in, in, in Arizona, Maricopa County. And so as we grow and expand, this will cause me to tinker more because we'll have to change the model somewhat in terms of the field personnel. But then we said, well, what about you know, county? What about leasing homes? Oh, we can't do that because leasing homes, you have to physically be at the property. So we'll kind of figure that out later. And then, but property inspections, they're not time sensitive to a degree. So somebody could get in their car and drive to one park one day and do an inspection. The next day they can drive to another park and do an inspection and so on and so forth. Uh, repair and maintenance, that's either emergent or it's, can be, it can be scheduled for a later date. But again, you have to have eyes on the prize to know what, what those issues are. So as we started refining this model, what we started noticing was that as we started to um, centralize everything into one location, at least anything, and let me say it this way, anything that we, that, that can be done on the phone, we wanted to push that into a centralized um, uh, location versus Anything that needs to physically be inspected, that would be pushed out into the field and then reported back to the central location. So effectively, this is what it looks like. You have one person in their lane doing what they love every day, and you end up getting super, super efficient with this. And so what we started looking at as we've grown is like, we now have one team, you know, for, well, basically one team for all of our properties. So we're looking at it from a team approach. But just like any of you that, that have played sports in the past, you're going to have a football. Let's say you're going to have a you're going to have a center that hikes the ball. You're going to have a quarterback that calls the plays. You're going to have a running back. You're going to have a wide receiver, and so forth. So you've got to have a team with different roles. Everybody can't do the same role, and 
even if you took the you know if, the, if you took the running back and said, hey, I need you to be the, the nose guard, he probably doesn't like that job, doesn't want to do that job. So we want to again make sure that you love and like, but particularly love what you're doing. And we started building out this team. And as we did this, we said, well, how do we do this? What, how do we get efficient? And we use technology, number one. We've talked a lot about this this weekend. So we want to use technology and use it to leverage our time and leverage our finances. And then we want to have good communication. When we, in about, probably it was 2017, when we really started to pull managers out of the field. And we said, we, we experimented with this. We said, what if we just didn't have a manager at the park, but we still could provide great customer and resident services. So we started experimenting with that. And guess what? We had some hiccups. We did have some, we, we had some that have worked fine in, plus 55 park, we had some struggles and some challenges. But we, 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 um, but we kept tinkering. We kept saying, what does this look like? So we said remote management is possible for technology and the communication. The last one is organization. So we had to organize our staff to where again, they're doing what they love and then they can be in their gift, but we can also take care of the customer. So the, the obvious thing, first of all, was again, phone calls. We get a lot of phone calls now. Um, and again, with our current portfolio, sometimes, how many, Brittany? What do you get, like a couple hundred calls a week? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. easy. 250. 200, yeah, 250 to 300 calls a week. And so that became, again, inefficient, right? But if you, what, what I was struggling with as an owner is I'm like, well, how will I know how many people are calling Park A? How many, do, how many people will I know is calling Park B and Park C and Park D? And what we started finding, you started listening to some of these calls like, yeah, looking for an RV space. In the old model, I'm sorry, sir, we don't have an RV space. We don't have any RV spaces. But we have 10 RV spaces at the other park, you know, two miles down the road. So when you started centralizing this, it started to make sense that if somebody called and wanted an RV space, we'd say, absolutely, what are you looking for? I'm looking at Mesa. Oh my gosh, yeah, we happen to have three parks with those, with, 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 um, with RV spaces. So remote management can provide many sales and leasing advantages. So uh, we, we then, this is where we, we're, 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 I'm still tinkering. So we said autonomous bookings and self-guided showings. And this was before COVID. We ended up buying an apartment building, and it's a 63 unit building in Tempe. And a really good friend of mine is also a software technologist, and he he's been in the multifamily business for years. So what I started doing again is I when I first started in this industry in 2010, I would get best practices by going to other mobile home parks, shopping those parks, and again, hey, I tell people who I am, but hey, I want to learn, I want to grow. And then what I said is Maybe I should go outside of our industry and see if there's something else, see if there's something I could be, could learn from or that I'm missing. So I started shopping apartments. And as I shopped apartments, I was amazed and astonished at the same time because their model for, for leasing and selling was radically different from our model. And the first thing I noticed is, um, I went to an apartment complex, a newly developed one in Peoria, Arizona, and the, the person that owns this friend of mine is a large, large complex. And I went into the apartment complex, opened the door, and there was somebody right at the door that greeted me. Hey, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'd like to lease a two-bedroom apartment. He said, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I just need a copy of your ID. And I said, okay, here's my ID. And then she said, let me tell you about our community. It's amazing. Here's the pool, here's the gym, here's where all this stuff is. And it's a great community, and we can do barbecues on the weekend. You know, and she gave me the sales pitch. Then the amazing part was, and we never did this because in the home park world, we physically take the customer to the home in the golf cart or walk them, walk them there to see the home. Then what she did is she said, "Here's the keys to the two-bedroom model. It's down the hall. Stay as long as you like, and just when you bring back the key, I'll give you back your driver's license." I said, wow, that's weird. We don't do that in our business. So of course. I walked down, I opened the door, and I went into the apartment unit, and I'm like, man, this is, this is kind of cool. I'm in here by myself. No one's pressuring me. No one's trying to sell me something. And so, of course, me being the tinker, I came back to the office. I'm like, is there a way to duplicate that in our business? 
And so we started doing that in the mobile home park world. We said, well, when somebody comes to the office, we'll do the same thing. We'll let them go see the home. We'll give them the key, um, and we'll have them go to view it, and then we'll come back and go look at it. We started to see an improvement in our sales by doing that, by not actually physically going with them. Because sometimes people will pull into your park and they'll go, yep, nice park, I really want to live here, I want to stop. If they don't, they'll just keep driving through. But again, technology, most people don't find you by driving through your park. Most people find you by what your web presence is. So when I we started experimenting with this idea of, of self-showings, we, when I talked to my friend Mike, who's the technologist, I'm about to show you a video, we, he said, hey, he goes, I, I've got 10 years of phone calls of every imaginable question that a, um, a prospect would ask. And I've been recording these calls for 10 years. We've then taken this, and this new company is called Leasehawk. We've taken this and we've now um, bundled it up to where we are using an AI robot that will answer the phone 24-7 and literally can go through a self-guided leasing tour. So I'll show you this video, it's about four and a half minutes, but this is from, literally from prospect to showing and then application and so on. So let's go ahead and watch this real quick. Acceptable pets include cats and dogs. The following dog breeds are prohibited. 
Doberman, German Shepherd, Great Dane, Pitbull, Rottweiler, and Siberian Husky. There is a $200 deposit and $25 per month rent fee per pet. Maximum weight per pet is 85 pounds. Limit two pets per type. What other questions do you have? What either? We have a $50 non-refundable application fee. Deposit amounts vary by apartment but range from $200 to one month's rent. What else can I help you with? So from that point, um, when they go through this self-showing process, then what they would do is about 10 minutes after they leave, we know they've left because again, our, our technology tells us they're gone. Then it sends them a text message and says, hey, what did you think about the unit? How did you think about the pricing? So we get feedback and we get actually quite a bit of it. And sometimes it's like, oh, we're priced too high or, you know, eh, I don't like the location or whatever. So we're getting real time feedback. And that is really helpful again from a sales perspective because then you can find out where, where you have deficiencies in your property or maybe in your marketing or whatever. But if they end up liking the, the uh, property, they would text and say, I really like it, I'd like an application. At that point, our uh, Jeff in our office and, and our customer service support team would immediately now reach out and call, call, call the resident. I've got somebody that absolutely uh, pre-qualified, we've got a copy of their ID, they saw the unit, they like the pricing and they want to apply. And it's just been, it allows us to lease so much more property with less effort because we're burning through that I'm not interested or maybe I don't qualify because I have a pit bull or maybe I have some criminal that Melissa Parham was talking about in her talk. So we, we, we literally try to minimize that up front so that when they do come in, you know, when they're ready to apply, we have somebody that actually wants to live in our community. That's when the human becomes extraordinary because now you want to really start taking the ball. So then we get on the call. It's a little creepy, but what Mike's built out on that with, uh, with, with this kind of digital uh, leasing assistant, but it's a, it's a leverage tool. So we tried this in the apartment. We had a 63 unit. We literally demolished this whole building and rebuilt it. And in, in doing so, we said, okay, this works in the apartment. Our goal was, the question we asked, we got curious, we got knowledge, and our, and our question was, can we lease a 63 unit building without ever physically showing any of the units, having a human being actually show the unit? And so this is what we did, and it worked. And now what we're looking at is we're working with Mike to um, modify some of the questions that we would get in an RV park or that we would get in a mobile home park because there are some different questions, there are some nuances. So we're working on that. And once that's built out, then again, we'll have this option where somebody can call at two in the morning and they can get all the information they need. They can talk about qualifications, pets or whatever. They can schedule a showing and they can do it at two in the morning, five in the morning, Saturday, Sunday, we don't really care. So, um, so again, once they, once, once they, they're queued up, we're like, now they want to apply. So our Jeff on our team or so many customer service support, we're going to send them a, a link to go ahead and apply. And once they apply, then of course, if they're approved, we're going to send them a lease agreement online. They need to sign that. At which point, now they're ready to move in. We'll collect all their move-in charges. And we actually text them the code once we collect the charges. That's also automated the system. They get a code and they say, okay, here's your code, you paid all your fees. And so we don't meet that prospect until after they've moved in. So, and again, this was this was what we did in the apartment. And we're, we're, we're also doing this in manufactured housing. We're just not using the robot to answer the phone. But the, the point is, is that when the resident moves in, now they're living there. Then what we do is we actually call them, human call them, not a robot. And we say, hey, tell us about your experience. How did you like it? How did you do? You know, what could we have done better? How did you like our application process? How did you like the showing process? And we've gotten really good feedback from that. So we're still refining it, but we continue to refine it and make it better. So the other 
The other thing we, we find that's really frustrating, again, in our industry is, is accounts and billing. So again, bills are inevitable. You know, you need bill, you need to build residence by paying bills of your own. And so we want to make sure that somebody can really master that. So again, in the old days, we're like, well, we would use a third-party company that would um, read our meters and then they would send us a, send us a stack of invoices, and then we would have to go deliver them to the residents. And then we said, well, we can do that internally now, so we'll start emailing them emailing them. And the problem again, some people are like, well, I didn't get the email, I lost it, can you send me my bill again? And now we've migrated everybody to a tenant web access portal where they have it 24 seven on any device, any mobile device. And so this is kind of how we're doing the resident side. And so again, you've got multiple people making multiple payments and um, and as they do this, and as we've streamlined this, we, we said, look, we don't, need a, we don't need a physical human at the property to collect rent. We don't need anybody to go to a rent drop box because we don't have any. We don't need somebody to go to a bank because we don't accept checks or money orders. So we wanted to centralize that. So again, as you're scaling up and you're starting to, to you know, own more property, or even if you said, I just have one property, but I don't want to deal with all the headaches of that, that's where we can come in and help. So, you know, again, this is all centralized into one department. And again, it's really easy to manage when you have a human that's extraordinary that loves this and, and basically does this all day long. All right, and then from a resident perspective, we want to have all of our residents on one system. So uh, what I also learned from our apartment experience um, is that a lot of the, the apartment industry is a lot different from the manufactured housing industry in, in that probably, I wanna say 85% of it is all fee managed business. So if you own an apartment building, you don't manage it. You absolutely don't wanna manage it. You, you hire a management company to do that for you. And when you talk to the larger fee management companies, the gray stars of the world, it's one of the largest. I had the opportunity last summer uh, to meet Andrew Livingston and spend some time with him. He is the second in command at Graystar. And I said, what's your biggest headache? Because my tinker brain works. And he said, my biggest headache is that I represent a ton of owners all over the world. But some of them really like Yardy, some of them really like Rent Cafe, something like this. Goes, so what we're struggling with as a management company is we have all these different pieces of software that we're trying to figure out how we can integrate it into one system. But in our world, we, from, 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 you know, from what we do, is we don't want to have 29 systems that can, well, this is manages RV parks, and this manages mobile home parks, and this manages park owned homes or apartments. We want to have one system that does it all, which is, again, why we use Rent Manager. And so we, we have a place for all of our residents. Here's our, one of our website tabs. And so when somebody clicks on our website, we want to make sure the resident knows they can go to any one of our websites. They can log in, they can make a payment, or they can apply for residency right from the website. We want to make it easy. And then from the TWA prospect, when they go in there, this is kind of the login screen they get after they push the button. They're going to enter their email address and the password, and if it's asked them if they have an account. If they don't, they can sign up. Once they sign up, a human in our office does extraordinary things and gets notified and starts taking action on that. And this is what they see when they get in there, just a little snippet of it if they want to make payments. They see their open charges or open credits, their balance due, and they can view charges or they can make a payment. So again, all payments are collected without having a human involved. But we have to have some extraordinary human on the back end that is literally, um, you got the door print, yeah. Um, that is going to, again, monitor this and measure this. All right, service issues. Another huge, huge issue. It's like we are talking earlier. we got to have boots on the ground. we got to have people that are going to these parks and these properties and they're getting a call from somebody that maybe a resident calls and says, I have, I have an issue. Or maybe, hey, you guys have a flood from your clubhouse, whatever that issue is. So the cool thing about uh, TWA is that the residents now can 
go on and they can literally submit a service request right from their portal. And what we do in our system for, for whether it's rent collections or even uh, service issues, service, service, uh, service, yes, the service request, is that we automate the process. So the system behind the scenes is reminding them, hey, rent's, rent's due on the first, and then if it, the fourth comes, for instance, hey, uh, you haven't paid rent yet, you have one more day to pay before you're late, hey, it's the fifth, if we don't get your rent by 11.59 p.m., you're gonna be late, and then, of course, on the seventh, we have an automated legal notice that goes out to them. Same thing on the service request, if they enter a service request, the most frustrating thing for a resident is to go, I called somebody, nobody called me back. So we let the technology do a lot of the heavy lifting. We've received your service order, somebody will be in touch with you, and so they'll get a phone call, and say from, from somebody in our office that we've received it, we hear you loud and clear, and here's what we're doing. Um, but one of the things that, again, me being a tinker, is I said, well, why do we always have to have a human being at the property when we literally can use our time so much more efficiently if we're focusing on, on managing the property versus managing some of these, these issues that, that happen? And so we ended up, uh, finding a partner, they're called Latchel, and what they do is they integrate with Rent Manager, but what they do is they're very, very specialized and all they do is maintenance. So if you call them at 24-7, uh, 365, a human being will answer the phone. Two in the morning, five in the morning, Sunday, Saturdays, and when they answer the phone, they're all trained maintenance techs that love maintenance. They don't like maintenance, they love maintenance. So they use technology too, because honestly, we've never met them. We don't know where they live. And we have you know, no idea where they are in the country, but they answer the phone. And when they answer the phone, they are very first, what can I do for you? Oh, I'm having an issue with my, my toilet's plugged, or there's a flood in front of the park. And so they say, hey, can you get a picture for me? Can you, can you, can you send me a picture? So we'll, they'll snap some pictures. And they'll start diagnosing it in their maintenance stacks. Hey, can you FaceTime me real quick and show me what's going on? Now that the customer feels really, really important, like, oh my gosh, yeah, this person's really helping me out. And so, in fact, well, my team told me we're, we're getting a few today. We've got three or four a day just service requests that Latchel is basically taking those calls. So after they take those calls, they try to troubleshoot it. The most frustrating thing if you have park owned homes, and like I said, we've got the apartment building, is that. A resident calls you and says, my thermostat's broke. It's hot outside, my, my unit's hot. So then we send somebody over. You either physically go over, and, if, and again, like I said, managers, some managers love maintenance and they know exactly what to look for. But your manager that light loves to sell or maybe collect rent, maybe, they don't, maybe they, they're not strong in maintenance. So they go, oh, you're right, it is hot in here. Um, we better call the HVAC guy. So they call the HVAC guy. The HVAC guy shows up, walks in, and he doesn't come right away, or if he, you know, he'll come that day or later you know, tomorrow. And when he shows up, he walks in and he goes, yeah, it's hot in here, and he looks at the thermostat, he pulls it back really quick and goes, puts a new battery in it. He says, ah, the battery's dead. And he charges us $90 to put in a AA battery into the thermostat. So we started seeing this and going, this is frustrating. So I want somebody 24 seven that can answer the phone, that can diagnose that, Tell the resident, hey, can you pull that back? Can you want to put a battery in there? Hey, did that fix it? Oh my gosh, it's working great. Thank you very much. Latchel then goes into rent manager, middle of the night, whatever it is. They open the service order. They email the service order to our team. We know that they got called. Our team knows that, that it got self-diagnosed from Latchel and that the resident fixed the problem themselves with the, with the systems of attack. And that work order then gets closed. And when the work orders closed, our team will follow up and said, they said, hey, we saw that you had it, were, were you satisfied, did, did everything work out? Yeah, it worked out great. If Latchel can't fix it on the phone, then what they do is we tell them, these are the vendors you call. These are the vendors you call for HVAC, these are the vendors you call for electric, these are the vendors you would call for plumbing. And so they, again, do the heavy lifting for us. They'll call our, our, our maintenance um, vendor where we've designated, and they call them, and then they hold them accountable. They said, hey, this person's home is really hot. We need to get out there. It's 100 degrees in Arizona. They'll get out there, they'll fix it, 
as soon as they fix it, if you want, we're not doing this yet, but Latcha will even call them and say, please send us the bill so that we can upload the bill for our management so that we can get this paid. We've got a really good relationship with our vendors, so we're not using that service from them, but they'll literally go and do that. So what we want to be able to do is, again, provide really, really good service. And then Latcha too will reach out and they'll say, hey, how was, how was the vendor? Which we like because we want to hold our vendors account, accountable. We have, we have again, high standards for ourselves, for our, for our team members. We hold ourselves accountable. We want to make sure that we're holding our vendors accountable too. <clears throat> so I talked about this. We assigned and approved vendors automatically. And again, it's managed by one system across multiple properties. So we can bolt on a property. We can scale up our system so fast. We can grab 200 units, 50 units, 10 units, it doesn't matter. We can plug it in and all this stuff is automatically working behind the scenes um, in a matter of a couple of days. No, because Latchel, it's almost like if you were my resident, I would say, instead of calling me, I'll, I'll give you permission to call my plumber. Because they're, they're, instead, I'm not an expert, I'm not a plumber, I'm not an electric, I don't know what's wrong with your, I can come over there and look at it, but if you called me and you lived in my community and you said, hey, there's something wrong with my plumbing, my, my bathtub's backing up, I'm going to, you know, now other people on my team that know maintenance would say, hey, is your sink backing up too? Might be a sewer issue, right? But I wouldn't know that, so I would say, oh, your bathroom's backing up? I can go look at it, but all, all, all what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to your house and I'm going to go, yeah, you're right. Should I try to get a plunger? What am I going to do? I'm not a plumber. So I'm going to hire an expert, right? And when I hire the expert, I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and get a plumber out here and help me out here later today or tomorrow, whatever it is. You're, you're frustrated because you're like, you know, I, I just want to take a bath. I don't want my plunger going on. So the, the, what Latchel's helped us with is that Latchel is like our plumber. The person that answers the phone is way smarter than me and knows how to diagnose that problem. Any other questions on maintenance or anything like that? Okay, so on the owner level, uh, we, we manage some properties. And so somebody asked a question at an earlier talk. It's like, well, what, you know, how, how involved can you be as an owner um, if we're using a system like this, if we're using the technology? And my answer to it was as little or as much as you'd like. So just like we have a portal for our um, residents, we also have what we call an OWA um, account. So if, if uh, your property was with, with us, you would, you would get an OWA login. And when you log into that account, you basically have access to your entire park in real time, no matter where you are. And so you, you would have access to everything. If you said, I want to see every invoice, I want to see every bill, all that is available to you uh, through, this, through, through our OWA portal. And again, we kind of joke around about you know, freedom, right? We, we all, if, you're, if you've invested in real estate, you initially probably said, I want to invest in real estate because I want to get my time back. But I've met a lot of real estate investors that lose their time because now they get sucked into it and they're basically, they've got to try to do everything and be everything. So we want to be able to, you know, get up, if you want to get up at two in the morning and you want to look at your bills or look at your reports, you can do that. If you want to sit in the doctor's office and you want to check on your, you know, your rent collections, your delinquency or, your, your other reports, you can do that. And this is actually a picture that I took in Machu Picchu. And when we were, we were playing with our technology stack, I was like, if I can sign a lease in Machu Picchu, then this is going to be a fun story to tell someday. So that's what we did. So, uh, so we, see, we wanted to have access no matter where we are. Because again, we're really busy, but technology should be freeing us up. We invest in the real estate not to become imprisoned by it, but to become free by it, right? So everything gets managed remotely. And I would just say what I see again, and I, like I said, I'm a tinker, right? So I like to really break things and mess things up because I always know, I learned, uh, I learned 20 years ago, I can always try something new and go back to the old way. But if I never try something new, I may never learn something or find a better way to do something. So again, jump out of your comfort zone 
if some of this technology sounds new to you because it's working. And like I said, we're, we're ready to ramp up our, our autonomous leasing to the next level with our RV parks and our mobile home parks based on the, um, one of the video I showed you. So again, ask yourself, is my model sustainable? Is your model sustainable? Um, I'm gonna, if I came up here and gave this talk a year from now, I'm gonna be doing things different than I'm doing now because I'm a tinker. So if you're just doing okay, that's great, but why not be great? Why not try something new? So again, this is kind of our story. We're sticking to it. We, again, we've got an unbelievable team. Some of them are here right now. And we just literally, we're all here, but our business continues to tick on and we're, 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 we're doing fine. So let us know if we can help you guys out. And that's it. So I'll take some questions. So your question is, how do we handle capital improvements yeah. for a property? And, and what, what do you mean? What do you mean by handle it? So if there are expenses that you don't want to pay to the property, would you take that on or is that something you mean if I were managing your property? So her question is that if, if we were managing a property for her and she wanted to do a capital improvement, would she then have to get re-involved and get the contractors involved? That's what you're asking, right? And the answer is it depends because some owners would say, I want to really be involved in my capital uh, improvement project. But a lot of owners would say, I, I have no interest in that at all. I don't want to do it. And so again, we've got a really good list of vendors um, that we use. And again, we're continually vetting them out. And if, if, even the cool thing with Latchell is that they'll help us out. Like if we didn't assign a plumber, Latchell already has a list of approved vendors in every uh, city in the United States. So they they would they would figure it out. But they, but again, uh, you're talking about capital stuff. So yeah, we would we would sit down and you know again we want to make sure we stay on time and on budget, right? Because uh, particularly now, like so we just got done renovating the apartment building, and what we started noticing is you know we just. The, the last three units, and all of a sudden you start running out of, we don't have any refrigerators, we don't have any stoves, we don't have any hood, hood ranges for the, um, you know, to go over the stove. But again, we, we can, we every property that we've bought, um, we've got in it to some degree and, and done, you know, uh, completely rent, rent of the clubhouses or, um, like I said, this apartment, we gutted the whole thing, literally, Took it down with a concrete building and took it down, new wiring, new, new everything. So, yeah, it just depends on how involved you want it to be. You have to sign, you have to sign off on the budget. 